Welcome back, YouTube. Uh, I think this is part six now for the CTSV. I'm working on uh, the aux, uh, DSX aux pump. So, here's what comes in the kit. You got your fuel pump set up. The wiring, pretty much plug and play. This does not use a hob switch. This uses uh, like a controller. So, you have uh, this here. Um, this controls when it turns on and off. This end plugs into the map sensor. So when it senses uh, about eight pounds of boost, it turns it on. And at about six pounds, it shuts it back off. Um, there is a way they're saying with the when this is hooked up, if you want to test it, I believe it says if you ground this blue wire, it will activate it. Just for testing. Um, this is uh, one of the fuel lines. The other one's in the car. So. What we got is right now I've got it temporarily just sitting through here. It's coming up from the top. Now, the kit comes with a fitting that screws into here, and then you're going to run the fuel line up. But I opted to not drill the tank. So I have a fuel hat from my previous video that I put in. Um, so we're going to do some connecting up top. I used a flashlight to locate where the hole was. But you can kind of see the light. You see the light up there. That's the hatch I have in the floor. Um, it just comes out through there. So we're up in the car. And that's where you saw the light coming through with this hose is. So I'm just going to push it down in there. And then I'm going to uh, just attach it to here. Which is the pickup from my previous video that goes to the bottom of the tank. And then from there I'm done up here and I can install this cover, seal it up, and uh, be done with it, at least for inside the car. And then the rest will be underneath. So there, I have it all connected, tightened up, and it's just going towards under the car. So I'll just have to route it at the bottom. So like I said, it was originally, the hose was supposed to go to here, but now it's at the top. So the fuel line might be, I'm not really sure if it's going to be about the same amount that I used or longer or what, but I'm going to wait until I'm done, obviously, to route that one because I can kind of like snake it through here if it's too long. I know it's not going to be too short, but if it's too long, I can lose a little bit of it in the run to the pump so that because I don't want to run it back and bend it and loop it back, stuff like that. So. So in their instructions, they're showing you to use that larger hole in the front of the frame to locate it, which is right there. So you're supposed to uh, hold the bracket that they give to you right here. It's threaded. So what you're going to do is you're going to get this up in there. Well, first, you're going to set it where you want it and get your holes drilled to this pattern. And then you're going to take it, so you're using that as a template. And then you're going to, this is going to go on the inside, and it's going to be like the nuts that this screws into to hold the two clamps that hold the pump there. So here I got the two holes drilled. I used this as a template. And just to show, they both fit through there like that. So this is going to have to go, with the bolts removed, it's going to stick through and you're going to have to hold it up like that up against the wall and that will um, allow you to put the clamps on for the fuel pump. So I got the plate snuck in. It's inside here now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this front one all the way tight and then I will take this bolt out so that I can put that one in and then I'll tighten that all the way tight and then I'll switch back to the front. So I got this tight. This one just comes right out, almost like there is a regular threaded frame. Now in theory, this is supposed to work. It looks like I got it started. So 
I'm gonna have that nice and tight, and then now I can loosen this one. Now I'll use, I can test it if it seems loose. And here I can just take it out by hand, throw the front clamp on there, and then I can uh, tighten it up, and then that's all good. Doesn't look like anything. Moving. And that's that. Worked out a lot better than I thought it was gonna. So it's not tight all the way, but I want to see how those lines are gonna fit here before I go crazy and might want to slide it back or something or a little bit. Now for now, both terminals are accessible. I think I can leave them there. I don't think I need to turn it, anything like that. But uh, so yeah, so now this is all good to go. I just need to run the line back, run the other line forward. And uh, yeah, I can uh, do the wiring. So here's this line that's running from where I showed you coming off the top of the tank. It does not seem too excessively long, so I can take the little excess out in the little bend here in the back here, there where they naturally where they factory bends, and it uh, looks like it's going to be good to go. So I won't have to um, move anything. So now I just have to run the front line. It's like a almost 180 degree turn. And that's going to come back along with this one and then that is going to key in right up here there's a t fitting that goes here where the other one goes it's a 90 degree fitting and then actually all that's left is just the plugs so here's the lines hooked up and tightened up I got some clearance from the floor i gotta cut the zip ties then in the box i was wondering what this was for but um to give this a little piece of aluminum there's a threaded hole existing just tighten that up and that's what holds it up here and then i have this little short run to go so from here to there and this is just got to get tucked up and zip tied up out of the way but yeah the fuel part's almost done okay so the fuel line up here i, I kind of slipped the fitting on it already there's where it goes with the blue tab there you have to pull this tab down so here i just slid it back off so this is kind of like the stock connector so you're going to push that in and then push the blue tab back in and then push the other line back into this and then this is going to from then on you're going to need that tool that goes around the line and for the quick release okay i got this what they call the jumper fuel line out of the car and at first because i didn't read the instructions good enough i was like it doesn't fit but what they want you to do is flip this around so originally it's like this where this is in the front and this is in the back but they want it the other way so it fits that way so what i got to do now is this just snaps on to the steel fuel line and then i'm gonna snap that on and i know that fits because i already tried it i was like you know it fits this side but not this side because this side when you put it in there this won't close so it will though on the stock rear fuel line so here's the fitting here i just pushed it on right here so it's snapped on good and then when i'm the other fuel line the little jumper goes in between these two and those just snap together. Well, the, the front one snaps in with some, where you squeeze the sides and the other one goes in and you push the uh, plastic clip up. Okay, so here's where they installed. This is the hose reversed. The clip used to be up in the front. There's the, uh, 
90 degree fitting here which is going up to the front there and we'll see if we'll leave this for now i don't know yet but i got it back in the uh, holder here i took the lock plate off because i don't see a need for it but uh because they snap in pretty good so everything's pretty tight snug as far as the hoses go that looks like i got plenty of clearance my exhaust will hit the ground before that will so uh now it's on to the wiring so i think they show it feeding through these holes i think i'm gonna check it out but down here is just the two wires and up top i believe it's two grounds and a hot and then the um the plug-in for the map so i decided to run this these wires that go to the uh, fuel pump down through the engine compartment there's a factory hole right there behind this bracket so I took the uh, there's one 10 millimeter bolt hole in that bracket I fed it through in this area and then there's little ways I can get it and I plan on coming out that little hole right there this here and then hook it to that and then everything else is up top okay so I actually was able to get it all the way up to the top there so it's coming right out the top of this right here and then it just goes through comes out there i gotta pull i gotta pull the slack up to the top but i got this bracket bolted back on so all i gotta do is pull that back up and then get the top done okay back up top everything's done what i did is i drilled two holes here and i got some self-tapping screws here holding it to this uh the brace there's that, I gotta cut these ties. The line runs down there into that hole that I was talking about earlier. This T connection is plugged in here. And then the stock wiring plugs here. And then it, this goes into the, uh, the controller. Now, if you want to test your pump, uh, you can use this blue wire to ground. And you can probably hear it. So I'm going to tape this up to tape the end up. I might add a switch to it or something, but I'd assume that if you ever had your fuel pump go out, like your regular pumps, this possibly could work to get you home, I would think. So um, this orange wire is for an LED. I believe if you want it to <clears throat> light up when the pump is turned on, you would hook that up to your LED light on the positive side and then ground it and then... Uh, that way, when it engages, you would know um, electronically that it, it's getting a signal. Also, when the control box has 12 volts of power, this light will always be on, and it says it's a very low draw. So I guess you're not to worry about that being on. So, um, yeah, I would assume when you turn the key on, the 5-volt reference lights up, and then the output light comes on when it's engaged. But like I said... If you want a light inside to light up, you can use that. But that's it for that. i put this cover on real quick. All right, with the uh, engine cover in place, you can't even tell it's there, you know, other than this little thing here, but that that's hard to see. So, all in all, I'm glad I did the uh, above in the hat instead of below because I've seen back and forth people having issues with the uh, gas tank fitting leaking, <clears throat> so I just want to avoid all that. So, with that being said, uh, we can give it a shot starting it up. Um, 
throttle body. So we'll see if that helps out. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with everything so far that I've done. So that'll do it this week for this car. Um, I uh, have to uh, get the wide band in it. So with the weather being in the 40s, almost 50s, I'll get that done this week. Um, the only delay in doing it is how I'm going to run the wires into the car. <clears throat> so once, oh, and I got to seal up the uh, floor in the back with that plate. So um, that's all I got for this week. So until next time, we'll see you.